Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics and in this video we are continuing the tour of our bookshelves that we started with the massive 45 minute Shelf 1 episode linked above. This episode is not going to be anywhere near as long, primarily because this bookshelf is not as big as Shelf 1 and the books that it contains are thicker hardcovers, giving us fewer volumes per square inch. This is what we consider our Alan Moore shelf because most of the Alan Moore books that we happen to own are housed on this shelf. So without further ado, let's get into Shelf number 2. On the topmost shelf, I actually start with a spare copy of Shazam Power of Hope, which is a giant, uh, I think it's a treasury sized uh, comic by Paul Dini and with art by Alex Ross. It's part of a series of superhero comics. I have four of them, Shazam, uh, Wonder Woman, Batman and Superman are the ones that I have. This I have an extra copy of, so this is where I store it unlike the other four. Then I have volumes one and two of the Mad Archives, which are hardcover editions collecting the first six and then seven to 12. So the first 12 issues of the original Mad comics. I really like early Mad. I think by the time I was reading it in the late 80s, it had sort of lost um, what the earliest Mad comics had, a sense of irreverence that later became just spoofiness. Along with those uh, volumes of the archives, I also have Mad's Original Idiots, so the complete collection of Wally Wood from issues 1 through 23, and the complete collection of Will Elder comics from issues 1 through 23. There's a Jack Davis volume as well, which I want to get, so between the 12 complete issues in these archives and the 23 issues, stories by these creators, that's a pretty good solid foundation of early MAD. I'd love to be able to continue this series of MAD archives, but this is pretty good for right now. Then we have Lock and Key, a series which I only read for the first time last year after hearing about it for many, many years. I decided to take a chance and got the Master Edition. Uh, volume 1 contains the first two trade paperbacks, so the six trade paperbacks of the original series are collected in these three volumes. So I took a chance and got volume one in this hardcover edition, hoping that it would be as good as people said, and I really enjoyed it. I liked it a lot, so I was glad to pick up uh, volumes two and three in the same editions. This actually worked out to be about the same price that six trade paperbacks would have cost me, at least at the time I was buying it, and I'm glad to have um, this nice, spooky, mysterious sort of horror story, but without the gore. I really enjoyed it, uh, and I'm glad to have it in these handsome editions. After that, we have the slipcase box set of the Nemo trilogy, following on from uh, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen by Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill. Uh, so you have Nemo, Heart of Ice, The Roses of Berlin, and River of Ghosts that span several decades, collected in three hardcover volumes in this one slipcase. Then we have The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Volume 3, which is Century. So Volume 1, Volume 2, Black Dossier were followed by Volume 3. And this is the collected hardcover. More Alan Moore hardcovers, uh, Providence Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. Slim collections of Alan Moore's New England Lovecraftian horror story. Then possibly my favorite Alan Moore story, From Hell with Eddie Campbell. This is a hardcover edition I have, which does feature a book plate signed by Alan Moore. The Ballad of Halo Jones is perhaps my second favorite Alan Moore, early science fiction story that was published in the magazine 2000 AD. This is the first trade paperback edition of Halo Jones I ever bought. It wouldn't be the last. In fact, some of them are over here. Halo Jones Book 1, Book 2, and Book 3, published by Titan Books in this original 2000 AD format, unlike the trade paperback, which is shrunk down to American standards. So three volumes over there in that form as well as a deluxe hardcover, which is kind of rare. I've not really seen many copies of this around. Finishing off the Alan Moore on this shelf, we have the complete Alan Moore Future Shocks and the complete DR and Quinch, also collections of comics from 2000 AD, and my old foxed copy of V for Vendetta, which is signed by David Lloyd from the time he attended Delhi Comic Con. 
On the second shelf, we have more Alan Moore. In fact, the entire collection of the works penned by Alan Moore for America's Best Comics in the original hardcovers. These are the original collected editions in hardcover, dust jacket, ribbon, the whole works of The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Volume 1 and Volume 2. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, The Black Dossier. Tom Strong's book 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The spin-off, Tom Strong's Terrific Tales, book 1 and book 2. Alan Moore's Top 10, book 1, book 2, the prequel, The 49ers, as well as the spin-off sequel, Smacks. That's followed by Alan Moore's Tomorrow Stories, book 1 and book 2 and five volumes of Promethea. And tucked in right at the end over here are the three issues of The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Volume 3, the hardcover collection of which we saw in the shelf above. So that's 1910, 1969, and 2009. The third shelf sees some deluxe hardcover editions, including two of Tom Strong. Each one of them collects two of those editions that we saw up there. However, there should be three to collect all six volumes, but only two were ever published. I don't think we're ever going to see the third volume come out, which is a pity because Tom Strong is a great series. I really enjoy it. And this oversized uh, deluxe edition is a really good way to read it as well because they're slim volumes. So two of them put together isn't too bulky, as you can see, which is the same for Ex Machina. It's fantastic to read in these deluxe editions. Uh, we saw the trade paperbacks of this on shelf one and I really like these deluxe editions. Again, they're just the right sort of slimness uh, for a great series and you get the hardcover oversized thing that we love. The Swamp Thing run of Alan Moore's hardcovers aren't oversized, but I do love them nonetheless. They are very good reproductions. I've heard some people complain about the paper quality. I really don't understand. I think uh, this is much better than the trade paperbacks that I used to own. Maybe it's just in better condition, but I love this run. I love Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, and I think these are great editions of them. So all six volumes in hardcover. There's also the DC Comics Classics Library, The Roots of the Swamp Thing, which collects the original stories before Alan Moore uh, took over and sort of revamped the whole series. And then we have five volumes of Why the Last Man Deluxe Editions. So this is a great series. I enjoyed it a lot and I've enjoyed revisiting it since. And as soon as I saw the deluxe oversized editions on high quality paper, I knew I would have to upgrade my Vertigo trade paperbacks. In general, Vertigo trade paperbacks, they were great books, but somehow the production quality of those early ones isn't great. So I've always wanted to upgrade uh, for all the series that I've enjoyed because they tend to get brown and foxed, at least the copies that I had, uh, the trade paperbacks do. And so the deluxe editions become an almost necessary upgrade if you really enjoy the series. And finally, here on the bottom shelf, we have some books that regular viewers of this channel would have seen before. The four absolute editions of The Sandman that collect the original 75 issues. I don't have volumes 5 or Overture or Death, etc. Just these four, the original series. An absolute Watchmen, the five of which, along with Batman Year One Absolute, I have videos for. And the ones I don't are DC The New Frontier by Darwin Cook, a superb book. Absolute Batman The Long Halloween, which is a story I really like and appreciate in the absolute format. And Absolute The Court of Owls, which I did not really enjoy. I picked this up because it was on sale. It was almost the same price as getting the individual books. But in my opinion, it doesn't quite belong on the same shelf as these other volumes. So there you have it, a quick look at shelf number two of our comics collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like to let me know. If there are any books you'd like a closer look at, let me have your comments as well as all your suggestions and questions down below. This has been For the Love of Comics. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you at shelf number three.